Every year, more than half a million people go missing in this country. And this week, NBC News is highlighting the stories of missing people who may not make those big headlines, who may not be on the national newscasts. Keep in mind that putting together a well-coordinated search for somebody quickly is, in some instances, quite literally the difference between life and death in these missing person search and rescue situations. Time is so important because the longer it goes, the likelihood of finding this missing person alive drops dramatically. Well, now, an evolving science called, and I'm quoting here, it's called lost person behavior. This science that is helping first responders by using data to better inform their decisions and by boosting the search team's chances of finding lost loved ones. Tom Winter gets an inside look. Watch. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack, searching far and wide for the nearly 600,000 people lost each year in this country. In New Mexico, a group of third graders were lost hiking on a school trip and found safely 45 minutes after searchers got the call. In West Virginia, a search and rescue team gives the family of Robert Poor closure after finding his body. Leaders of both searches crediting an evolving strategy driven by research and guided by human behavior, cutting search times from days to hours. One of the tools we use um, is uh, a resource called Lost Person Behavior. It was a book that was written by Dr. Robert Kester, and it provides um, dozens of profiles of different um, missing person categories that we can draw from to get an idea uh, how people tend to move. The author says it comes down to time. Time is not the friend of the lost person. Most people who are found in the first uh, 24 hours are, are going to have a 95% chance or, or higher of being found alive. Once that first 24 hours goes by, that the chances start dropping. What types of successes have you had? What's the feedback you're getting from the field? It's actually 50% of the finds occur within three hours. And about 90% of searches are concluded uh, within a day. So we actually have some, some pretty good uh, success. He says he's done the homework. While my research started with 24 cases of dementia, it eventually uh, grew to 50,000 uh, cases. Kester created 41 categories that a missing person might fall under and layers of behavior those missing people will likely follow. The New Jersey State Police and its search and rescue coordinator, Brian Enberg, are believers. We find out from missing persons that, oh, we're looking for uh, a missing dementia patient who left this long-term care facility. Facility. Okay, well, from there, we can lay out statistically 25% were found within this ring, 50% within this ring, 75% within this ring. Experts say it's about playing the odds, putting searchers in the best position possible to find people, hopefully alive. The case starts with the detective. So the first thing we do is we try to gather as much information as possible from the uh, family and friends of the victim. It could be a social media account, an email address, their cell phones, their vehicles. And we gather all these data to try to establish a search area. Then it's time to draw the maps and put boots on the ground. I get that first call saying, hey, we've got a vehicle located here. So that's always the first dot that goes on the map and then I hit save. You know, now we've got an incident. Using new technology, a search team from the State Department of Corrections trained to find people who do and don't want to be found take to the woods. So that's basically showing us how well the area has been covered. So each one of these lines indicates another searcher. And as you see this, this has uh, been a game changer for us to be able to track our teams like this. They say the new maps and technology are all part of this new thinking and the hope of bringing someone home to their loved ones. Oh, it's a phenomenal feeling. It's just a huge high, you know, when you can, when you can come home and, and, and even if it's just bringing that closure home, it's just huge. Uh, Tom Winter is joining us now for that fascinating inside look. So, Tom, talk about new tech, right? Because this is something that has come on the scene. There's stuff like drones that I have to think is, you know, helpful on this front. It can absolutely be helpful, Hallie, but not so much when we're talking about heavily wooded areas in areas where you have forests. So in his upcoming book, where he now has almost 200,000 cases, he addresses how best to use drones. An example he draws is that in those areas with heavy brush, there's no substitute for people going through the woods trying to find somebody who could be uh, laying down or close to a tree well, where they just couldn't see it from the sky. But for the 30 percent chance area where somebody could be in an open field, 
field or along a river or a brook, that's a great area where you could fly a drone and find that person. It all goes back to what we talked about in the piece, the idea of probability and odds putting people in the best place to find someone. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.